Hello everyone, and welcome to our eighth installment of Tango Kilo Sierra. We got something real special for you today. Seeing how the Marine Corps birthday and Veterans Day is upon us, which is awesome, I have something that is the most American thing ever. What is behind me right now was built in 1927 and was a cornerstone of life here in the capital city of Columbia, South Carolina. Come with me. What I have behind me here, the Capitol Stadium. This is where not only the Capitol City Mets, but also the Capitol City Bombers played. And then after them, the Columbia Blowfish, before they turned into the Lexington Blowfish. This has been a piece of history here in Columbia for many years. As you can see, the scoreboard in the field behind me, we're gonna take you in there, show you a little bit of it. Um, then, we're gonna go back to my house, my new house, like I told you we was moving. We're gonna camp out in my backyard and cook a little bit of good food. And then, uh, yeah. Look at that, the old fire hydrant. It's been decommissioned. As you can see, we've got this wooden wall as we approach the outfield of the stadium. This outfield at center field was over 400 feet. So that means you had to smack a baseball over 400 feet just to reach this wall. We're gonna go in right here because the wall has obviously been dilapidated and fallen over the years. And this, my friend, is the cap. Capital City Stadium. From where I was a kid was the Bombers. This also happens to be the last place in 1956 that Hank Aaron played his last minor league baseball game. And that dude is a legend to the Atlanta Braves community. Congratulations. Chop, chop. That way to be Atlanta Braves. Good job on a freaking uh, uh, World Series this season. Originally built in 1927, it hosted three different baseball teams and has 100 years of illustrious, almost 100 years of illustrious history. It went from the Mets to the Capital City Bombers to the Columbia Blowfish, which are now the Lexington Blowfish. Ultimately, nobody's played here since 2015, but technically it's been closed since 2005. What we're going to do is we're going to take you around, show you some of the facilities. As you can see, the old Blowfish sign over there. If you look over there, that's our home dugout. And then over there is our visitor's dugout. And then we got our concessions back there, our media booth up there. As you can see, where the speakers are still there. Could you imagine? Looking somebody down, staring them down the barrel, taking your play, firing the baseball in minor league baseball game. Now I'm gonna run over here. Staring down that pitch and sending it flying. And watching it leave the stadium. Running the bases to a cheering crowd. Just uh, really goes to reiterate the history of this place. You can feel it as you stand here, just looking at the seats and how the sun is taking their color and how mother nature is taken back where there used to be clay sand and concrete just like in our previous videos just like i said mother nature will always win see this net here back when this place was built there was no net except for right behind the batter's plate home plate these nets obviously are from before the recent rule change but after the rule changes of 2005 to where they had to put nets up at the dugouts and over certain parts of the bleachers because there were children and and people that when a foul ball would get cracked it'd go backwards into the crowd bonk them right in the head nobody likes an injury especially in the middle of something that's supposed to be fun like a baseball game so we're gonna bring it down here to the home dugout this is where they keep their bats. 
Come in here, test you out one. You didn't like that? Grab and grab. Up here is where your helmets would sit. Up here is where the players would stand and look above the railing here onto the game to keep up with it. And uh, you can see the lead paint rotting off the walls. Some eye blacks from where somebody used them on their face right here and then attached them right there. So you can tell that this has been uh, dilapidated for many years. So we're going to take you to the visitor's dugout next and uh, we'll look around there and see if we can see any differences. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we made it over here to the visitor's side of the baseball field. This is the visitor's dugout. As you can see, there used to be a net there. It's rotted and fallen off since then, just like this one started to. We're going to go down in here, and we're going to show you a little bit of the... Uh, would you look at that? Pack it in and pack it out, people. If you're going to come out here and enjoy this, this place is abandoned. Don't nobody clean it anymore. You need to make sure that you do your part. Somebody shotgunned it, too. How about that? Do your part, clean up after yourself. Pack it in, pack it in. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go down into this visitor's dugout. We've got our bullpen over there. We're gonna show you here in just a minute. Some napkins in here from where people's been dirty and not wanting to pack out their trash. We've got some bird's nest in there, which I guess something like this that stays out of the elements is finally, you know, getting to use somehow, at least by nature. They didn't have a bench, I guess, for players to stand on to watch the game, but, I mean, if you're as tall as me, I'm about, I'm about six foot tall, you got a pretty good view of the game from or just right here. So what we have right here is where the bat boys and the ball boys would sit. So you hit a foul ball, straight down the foul, foul line, there's a child or a grown man or a teenager that would sit right here, and they'd retrieve the ball. Or they'd run back over there towards home plate and they retrieved the bat so it wasn't in anybody's way and the ball could get back into play and the game could continue. Could you imagine sitting here watching a ball game with your family? This would be one of the most perfect seats. As you can see by the metal and the little number plates that are pop riveted here, this plastic was an afterthought. These were probably metal originally. But plastic still in great shape, although it's sun bleached. Still pretty cool to sit here and enjoy it before they destroy it come this spring. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a blessing just to get this and be able to sit in this chair one last time. And. One thing I'd like for you guys to do, because we really enjoy y'all's con comments and everything, is please like and subscribe to our channel and share it if you f feel like you, you can or if you want to. And uh, we'll keep finding great places and pumping out great content and having a couple of coors and tasting the mountains and cooking great food. Because this isn't just for you guys. We really enjoy getting out of the house and getting away from the old 9 to 5. Especially in great places like this that might not exist come next spring or heck even next year. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Just like the mascot would after a game or somebody, be it the visitor side and or the home side, scored a certain amount of points. It was tradition. In some baseball cultures, mascot jump on top of the dugout and do that many push-ups. We're gonna take you down to this tunnel here and show you where bathrooms and working sessions is. Let's go this way, first. Walking cooler here. As many of you know, this is my main job. My day-to-day -day is I'm a refrigeration and repairman on walk-in coolers and ice machines for restaurants. As you can see, this is a big coal pack. She's got some age on her, but she's still in great shape to be out in the elements for so long. So this is a really cool sign to see. It'd be a sign that I'd love to have. 
because this so happens to be the hospital I was born at back in 1994. Richland Memorial Hospital. How about that sign? It's still in great shape and it's been out here now. Boy, do I hope that they try to auction off some of these signs before they tear this down this spring. Because I would totally spend about 100 bucks, 200 bucks on something like that. That's awesome. What a great thing to see this close to Veterans Day. Army National Guard. If you have nothing else to do and you'd like to serve your country, please go and sign up. Don't be like me and join the Marine Corps and have to do a bunch of crazy stuff for four years of your life. Nah, not really. Of course, that's the king man. So, what we have here is the ladies' bathroom. I don't think we should go in there, just out of respect. But that's pretty cool sign because that's painted. Let's see if it's even unlocked. No, it's locked. Damn. So we continue along here. Looks like a crappy water fountain. This is the men's bathroom. Sign somebody unfortunately ripped off the wall and probably stole. Because you can see remnants because of tagging, just like at Springs Park, where people don't respect other people's property. The OPP. But this one is locked also. Dang. Got a mattress here where some homeless people. Somebody called the police on us. Hopefully we don't get in too much trouble with being out here. Really aren't doing nothing wrong, but trying to document a place where they tear it to the ground. So we're going to end this uh, little video here, see if we can't make our way out of here in a diligent fashion. Here you grab my camera. So, as you can see, South Carolina State House on this Budweiser sign. Fireworks Friday and Saturday for home game. Get your Glowfish baseball tickets. Now it's back to the Columbia. Put back when it's the Columbia Glowfish. Now it's the Lexington Glowfish. Always having a good recreational softball league between the uh, first responders out here. Your typical sponsor here get money and have seats reserved here for them. God bless Columbia, South Carolina. I agree. Capital City State. So, when we looked out, this is where that cop was sitting. You never know what they're up to. But uh, he could have just been sitting there just waiting on a call or something. Who knows? But the greatest thing to do when you see authorities is to get the heck out of Dodge. Don't test it, get out of there. Find the quickest way out without having to cross their path. But we got out of there, we had fun, we got really great footage, and we'll see you at my house. I think that'll do. All right, so we're gonna get this, be able to clear our camping area and our uh, little fire pit area for tonight. Got our firewood, put it on top of our tarp here. Made it back to our house. Gonna have us a couple of coors, taste the mountains a little bit. Got our camping gear here. We're gonna walk it on back. This is my uh, humble abode here. All right, it's getting a little bit dark, as you can see, because of the daylight saving times change. Light is starting to fleet us early. It's around 5.30, 5.40. What we're gonna do, so we have got my little bit of camping gear right here. I set up my cot and my sleeping pad and my one-man tent. And then uh, we're going to cook you something awesome, build a little fire pit, and just genuinely enjoy our time here at in my backyard. Because trying to camp at that baseball stadium would have been a horrible idea. As you can see earlier in the video, we got ran up on by the cops. This is Zoe.
She's my good baby. She's gonna hang out with us until she goes back in the house. And we're gonna get camp set up. That my good baby? That my good baby? Yeah, that's my pretty baby. All right, let's get camp set up, huh? so graciously let us borrow and or use and uh, it's a pretty nice little mat comes in this nice little carrier here it's really easy to strap down to your backpack or anything it's real lightweight maybe weighs about a pound and a half what you do is you roll it out and it has this little valve here and you open that valve up and the foam inside inflates with air. And then it's prime little camping pad material. All right, so what we're gonna do, we can get this little fire going, get a little bit warm. So it's gonna be in the 40s tonight. But uh, we got our little fire pit set up here. We'll get this set up and then we got some delicious food to cook for you for Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday. Make a little bit of kindling there. What we got here is the Andes caps. I've eaten these since I was a small child. And they're corn chips. My cousin uh, actually recommended them to see what we could do with them. Not too bad. Good recommendation, Chris. That right there is going to get that fire started just fine. Just for a little bit of added fun, we're going to do the funky colored flames that we bought from Walmart today. I think it's about five bucks if I ain't mistaken. Let's see what we got when we open them. All right, they come in individual packs. So let's open one of them. And just toss it in there and see what happens. All right, so we've got a little bit of flame color going on, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to end up throwing them all in there and just see what happens. we got our fire colors going on. we got some green and some blue and some other crazy colors going. It's a really fun fire in my backyard here at my new house. You're going to enjoy this fire, then we're going to cook some good food for you. So what we got here is this uh, little green Yoda tent. The reason we haven't used this in the past is because it's bright green. And the last thing that you want when you're out stealth camping, trying not to get caught somewhere, is bright green colors that can be seen easily by a flashlight. So we're going to set this up because this is my backyard. I give a damn who sees us back here. As you can see, pretty visible to the human eye with a bright light. That's the reason that we're going to use it in maybe state park situations and or deep wood situations where you know we really don't have to worry about keeping a mask. You know what I'm saying? This right here fits you know, one person, their gear, and maybe even your dog if you need it to pretty easily. It's just a bright green that's easily seen. We got us a little stove here. It's pretty much an easy to light charcoal little stove. Not stove, but like little grill that's got the match light charcoal in it. And what you can do is you, what you do is you light the charcoal 
and let it burn for 20 minutes until it's all the way to red coals. And then you put your various different, for today what we have is hamburgers, because what's more American for Veterans Day than hamburgers? We'll toast our buns, put a little bit of our cheese on it, some of these uh, chips and condiments that we got, and uh, make something delicious. Light our torch, even though it really isn't in a situation for needing one, but why not, right? Overkill's always good. Put it down in here, light the little bag on fire. Said just light the corner. If we need to light more, we will, but I think just a little corner is going to be fine. Then, said wait for 20 minutes until your coals are fully cooked. You see the crazy dog over here being a crazy dog. She's ready to eat some food, just like we are. We're going to let these burn for the 20 minutes that it said. And then we'll see you when we put our hamburgers on. We're going to get these burgers put on here. Flip. Make sure you turn. Don't burn. Take some a little extra minute over these small amount of coals, but we're doing pretty good. We're gonna take our King's Sweet Hawaiian Buns, and that's what we're gonna have our uh, burgers on. Got us some uh, black pepper, and some all around seasoning here, complete seasoning. Put those two on there, and uh, get them seasoned down right for you guys. Put a good little bit of seasoning on it. Too much is never enough. So make sure you give it a nice little dusting. We're going to get our cheese put on our uh, burgers here. You want cheese good buddy? Yes sir. Alright. So we're going to get four slices of cheese going. We're going to get those melted on there. Then we're going to put them on our King's Hawaiian buns and uh, munch down. And I can't think of a better and more American feast than burgers on such a great holiday weekend like Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday. Happy birthday, Marines, and happy Veterans Day to everyone and anyone who's ever served. We appreciate you here at Tango, Tango Kilo Sierra, and we love you. Nice, delicious looking melted cheese. Yes, sir. And let them cook. Now look at how great that toasted. Not too much, but not too less. That's about as good as a lion bun with a delicious American cheeseburger. That's good, man, buddy. Being out here with me on such a joyous occasion, we're gonna have us a delicious feast. Right. Right. Delicious cooked burger right here. You can see the steam coming off of it. It's just well, like. Just like with a steak, not moving, but yet not too overdone. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we've got our fire contained, our coals from where we cooked our burgers contained. We're going to get to bed, go to sleep. Happy Veterans Day, and happy birthday Marines, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. That was a decent enough sleep for 
just sleep it in your own backyard. Get up, get my day started, I guess. Get camp broke down here in a minute, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go back to what we do normally. As you can see, even though we're in our own back, my own backyard, we packed it in, we packed it out. I'm gonna get that trash out of there, that uh, little stove we used for doing our burgers last night. Got our tents and our cot pulled up. Left our fire pit for future fires, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty good sleep, other than the railroad over there making a little bit of noise throughout the night. I had a pretty good sleep. Had a really good time. I'd like to say happy birthday, Marines. Happy Veterans Day. We'll find another great place, and we'll see you next time.